32. Oh, oh. Prilwitz into the side of Butwell. Here you can see the front wheels chattering. He kept the lock on, and unfortunately, that spun the truck around. When some Shane Van Isbergen style burnout on pit straight. My goodness gracious me. Here they come then around the final corner. We're about to go green. We're looking at the lights and they are off. We are underway as they roar down towards turn number one. I can hear a couple of brakes chirping. All the 23's been hit, turned around by Prilwitz. So that is not a good start for Fern who drove so well throughout yesterday, but got tapped into a spin. If you get a touch just in that rear right corner or the rear left corner, it's so hard to try and save them. The momentum in the trucks being so heavy, they just rotate so, so quickly around. As we see, there is the 31 truck that made the contact coming under pressure from uh, Smith at the wheel of that machine. Harvey Dale drove that throughout yesterday, but uh, Smith is back behind the wheel, the regular driver here today. Great to see uh, Shannon Smith. And he's going around the outside. We saw Harvey Dale pull this one off yesterday, oh, but Prilwitz closes the door. Oh, he's still closing the door. Two wheels through the grass. He couldn't quite make that one stick. That was a firm door close. Oh, and it's continuing, Dan, as they exit the turn. There's a little bit of contact there, so not too happy is Smith with the door being slammed firmly shut. He had the inside line, but there was not a truck Smith, so he took to the grass to try and get past, but he could not this time around, so he... Actually, no, he has indeed, so he's uh, regained his composure and got him on the old back straight there. So that's a bit of redemption there for the number 60 of Smith. That's a very uh, fast start as he comes across. So that was the battle for position four. Brewitz dropped down to position five and followed by Bird. So the number 31 there, plenty of action on this opening lap. The five remaining in this race. At the head of the field, it's Zamet, who's absolutely nailing his uh, job at the moment, doing a sensational job. He's almost two seconds clear of the lead. Uh, and we've got a fairly even spread uh, amongst the field as well. But, oh, oh the Bruins truck gone. has fallen off the circuit to the dr uh, driver's right-hand side. Smith is looking at that in his massive mirrors. And he'll be glad that he got past now. So he, Smith, has got shoots ahead of him now. So he's in hot pursuit of the light truck. Obviously, there's a big difference uh, between the two. The light trucks, obviously, apart from being just a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller, just slightly more nimble. It's actually more uh, visible aero as well, so they do handle a little bit better. You can see that they make, do make up a fair, pet, uh, fair amount of uh, pace uh, on the larger combatants uh, through the twisty parts of the Winter Motor Raceway. And indeed, Smith up the inside of shoots as they come through the chicane and onto the main straight once again. So that's Amoroso across the line in P2. Here comes Smith going past our camera point right now. With shoots now dropped back into position four. Fairly clean racing this morning, apart from a few love taps, as is customary in the Australian super trucks. But look at them, they are doing a sensational job. Certainly are. There's uh, battling all the way through the field, but Zamit, 14 flat last lap over three seconds faster than any other driver in the field. So uh, that's why he's a six-time champion, and if he wins the championship this year, he will take the record uh, for the most amount of Australian Super Truck titles with seven. But as we can see on the screen, shoots. Now, shoots loves to slide his truck around. He's always on the very limit all of the time. And you can see the difference. There's the lightweight trucks, and then these the, uh, the big, Heavy truck the big class, boys. the big boys, exactly right. As uh, we see Zamet continue to chip away out the front of this field. Here's a replay then of the start. So look for the 23 and the 31 side by side. 31, just, just as small as the small taps. And that's all it was around when Bird and everybody else had to take avoiding action. And a great job from everybody to avoid the 23 truck because it's quite a big thing to have sideways in the middle of the race track. Absolutely, Dan. Keep left unless overtaking. There was just not the room up the inside. And to touch on your point earlier about the sheer size and weight of these trucks, there is a lot of weight, obviously, but not a lot of it's over the rear. So once the uh, massive power and the torque is uh, they're trying to apply that, uh, get that down onto the ground as effectively as possible. They're pretty lively at the back end, so it didn't take too much of a tap to rotate the truck. Here comes Smith now. So the number 60 making significant uh, ground onto the back of Amoroso. So the number 96 is going to come under fire. Smith has been 
very quick these past few laps. He's actually doing 1 minute 15.4 uh, that last time around. He's the second fastest person on track. And he's about three seconds a lap quicker than Amoroso. So you can see he's made significant ground now as they come down the back, oh, the old back straight. He's going to keep, continue to reel him in. It's also curious that they use a, a lot of different uh, racing lines to try and unlock as much speed as possible from the truck. So it's not the traditional racing line that you usually see. Uh, they probably you probably use a bit more curb with these trucks. They are yes. a little bit more friendly, a little bit more uh, user friendly when it comes to going on road at times. But obviously, keeping it on the black stuff is the fastest way. Smith having a look around the outside now. He locks the front right, but gets it under control. He's still composed. He's still in hot pursuit of Amoroso. Amoroso, we anticipate, he's going to make that truck as wide as possible. He is not going to give Smith too much of an opportunity to try and sneak it up the inside or indeed the outside as we saw Smith having a look uh, around the old gum tree just a few laps ago. With Smith all over the back. Look how close they are, Dan, as they come up to turn five. There's no room on the inside. He thinks about it, darts to the outside. Can't get by this time around. Can he get a good corner exit? He's still in the hunt. So this is going to be a battle that's going to play out for the remainder. This is the penultimate lap for the opening race of the Australian Super Tracks for day three of round three of the Victoria Motor Racing Championships. You can hear them chirping. Smith still coming hard from behind. Is he going to find a way through as they come through the chicane? Final lap, the leader is about to commence. So these two are running, or Smith anyway, is running out of time to get past Amoroso. Despite the pressure being applied, Amoroso said his PB lap last time through. Nice exit from Smith. He's going to force Amoroso to defend. Down at turn number one, we saw a lock up from Smith down here last time. Not locking up this time. He's going to try the cutback. Surely he can't make it up the inside at two. No. Thinks better of sending one up the inside there. I see a five second penalty for Prilwitz. Maybe that's for the incident down at turn one. I don't think that is quite possibly so. You can see on the uh, left hand side of the screen. But here we are. Smith is running out of opportunities here. Is he going to send one up the inside at turn number seven? No. Amoroso defends that one. He knows that move. You can see his fellow Kenworth driver in the mirror. And he is defending at every single opportunity. Despite having a 12.7 litre engine, Smith is not able to make his way around at the moment. He's got a nice run there, though. There's there he a truck sweep. He's judged that to absolute perfection. Oh, he's got a bit sideways there, robbing door panels incredibly in trucks down towards the final sequence of corners. Smith is later on the brakes. If Amoroso can stay around the outside, though, he'll have the inside for the next corner. Is he going to be left room though? That was close as the race winner, Zamit, takes it, crosses the line. Oh, look at that for a sideways moment. Amoroso couldn't get back through. A great race between those two. Smith was patient. He was waiting, biding his time, and he finally made it stick with just a couple of corners to go. Here comes around the uh, final couple of corners. The remaining drives all through. It's running a little bit wide there. He comes across the line in position number six, just ahead of the car in which truck, sorry, that he made contact with at turn number one on lap one. But of course, Pruitt does have that five second penalty and will drop to the tail of the field. Sort of a quiet achiever there, Callum. One that really stands out for me in the lightweight truck Shoots finished a legitimate fourth position. I reckon that's my drive of the race. Absolutely, Dan. He uh, obviously probably doesn't have the outright power uh, of the larger trucks, but did extremely well there. Uh, obviously, he couldn't hold off the uh, hard-charging Smith. Uh, was making uh, some ground onto Amoroso towards the end there. But uh, look, Amoroso will be uh, just a little bit disappointed with that uh, final sequence of corners. He just uh, dropped out the position uh, as we counted down the end of the lap. So that confirms. And we are green at Winton on the short track. Fruwitz up the inside of Fern. It's a replica of earlier on, but this time they make it around unscathed. Good start from both those two. Oh, who's this on the inside? I think that was Amoroso, was it? Trying to squeeze through, but not quite able to do so. And uh, Butwell goes around the outside in the red truck. So Butwell's already got two places. One on Zamit and also 
on Amoroso as well. There's only the one small truck out there in this race. It's the number 32 of Lachlan Fern. So taking it to the big boys and can often do so. Good driver is Lachlan. Around the outside goes Zamet on the reigning champ. Great move down there at turn number seven. He gets two. two. Trucks. <laughs> How good's that? Two for the price of one around the outside at turn number seven. Thank you very much, he says. And uh, Botwell moves through past Fern as well. And I'm sure Amoroso will be looking to do the same on the exit. Puts the power down and blasts past on the run towards turn number, I can't even think on this shortened layout. We'll call it nine. I've just pulled a number out my uh, out my hat there. I've had no idea what number it is on this shortened layout. Uh, but the, uh, the truck's complete lap number one. Prilwitz ahead of this battle for position number two is up the inside. Comes Smith on Fern and makes it stick. And through will come Zamet as well. Fern's been hung out to dry there. Or oh, mistake from Butwell. An unforced error. And that allows the inside line for Amoroso. As you see a replay of the magnificent move from Zamet around the outside. Look at this. Everybody else is on the inside. There's a clear lane on the outside. He takes that lane, uses full advantage, and was left room on the exit of the corner as well. Just, Thanks. yeah, just the right amount of uh, space on the track limit on the left-hand side there as he came into turn eight. Here's Butwell on screen, doing a terrific job in the number one orange uh, Mack truck. Hats off to Ty Oxley for his efforts yesterday, but it is Butwell back behind the wheel and unfortunately missed the race earlier today, uh, but back out there and circulating in the number one. Now, Currently showing in position five. He's going to try and tag along the uh, behind the Amoroso, the number 96 truck just ahead as well as Erin Hopper's suit of Fern. It's been a spectacular start, we should say, from Steve Zamet, as we come to expect. He took out the opening race, or opening competitive outing for the weekend. Here comes Smith on the outside as they come up the main straight. Amoroso going past the camera point there, and we can see on screen now the Smith truck Having a look around the outside, gets a much better corner exit, and he will take it away from Prilwitz. Oh, no, oh, he's run wide. He's on the dirty stuff. He's off the track, and that allows Prilwitz to resume the lead. But have a look in his mirrors. He's got Zamet all over the back. We know just how quick Zamet is through this part of the circuit as they come through the sweeping left-hander. And they've got to jump onto the anchors, trying to rest as much speed as possible. And the outside line, not this time for Zamet. But he is looming, he is menacing for a pass for the lead. But Smith isn't out of this one either. He fancies his chances after Harvey Dale was behind the wheel of that truck uh, for yesterday afternoon's race. Look at that, too wide going through what we'd refer to as turn nine on the long configuration. That is incredible stuff there. They're going to be side by side as they come down the straight and they're continuing to reel in. They're going to be almost oh. three wide as they make contact. Prewitt still with the inside line there. Zamet hung out to dry, but he's going to try and hang in there. Smith likes his chances. He sneaks it up the inside. He's going to inherit the inside line coming onto the main straight there. So Zamet losing out ever so slightly there. Rubbing panels between the trucks. Here comes Prewitt. Here comes Smith. Smith on the outside. He tucks it back in behind Prewitt. And Zamet still looming in the background there. You can just see some of the stickers. It looks like they've been rubbed off ever so slightly on the left-hand side of the number 60 as they come through turn two, past the coat tire sign, and the sweeping left-hander, Smith's got to run, he's going to go up the inside as they come through. Uh, look how close they are, Dan, there is barely anything between them, actually oh. make a little bit of contact as well. They're doing a fantastic job, giving each other more than enough real estate, given the tight proximity of the track and the sheer size of the truck. Pruitt's up and looks up the inside, tucks it back in there, plenty of action, Dan. This is absolutely bonkers out there on the race circuit. These guys are fighting so hard. Pruitt's defending at every possible opportunity and then try to move back up the inside. And these three are fighting further behind as well for fourth position. So Fern, Amoroso and Butwell. And uh, Amoroso looking for a nice exit on Fern, but uh, not able to do so. Here comes Zamet, the power of the Kenworth. Allows him around the outside, does it? No, Pruitt's responds in the Mack truck. Great move back up the inside from the 31. That was a real class manoeuvre on the six-time champion who will not like that at all. And defends on pit straight, but Zemmick might be able to go all the way around the outside again. Last of the late breakers. 
is the number 31 truck. Zamet sideways on the exit. You can see the size difference. They're both big trucks, these two, but uh, the number 40 of Zamet is just that bit bigger. And uh, we'll pull alongside on oh, this off. minute to straight. Oh, yeah, I think put two wheels through the grass, as you say. But the 31 to me, I think because it's that bit smaller, it seems to be able to break that bit later under brakes. And uh, when you think the move's made, it can outbreak the truck behind. Oh, 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 that's close down there into turn number seven. This is absolutely sensational action on this glorious Sunday at Winton Motor Raceway. Where would you rather be than watching truck racing in the glorious sunshine around the nation's action track? The answer is absolutely nowhere else. This is awesome. Can't take your eyes off the screen. Oh, oh big tank slapper on the exit of the corner. A nice run for Zamet. We saw this play out last time, but Prilwitz could break later into the final sequence of corners and does so once again. He's only got one more lap now. One more lap and a couple of corners. Does Steven Zamet, what can he do? The race victory is now out of his grasp. But he's going to throw everything at it to try and take second. He's going the long way. He's earlier on the brakes. And he'll try and get the cut back into the second corner. This is just awesome. He's got a great got run. He's got an awesome run. He's up the inside, but Prilwitz closes the door firmly in his face. There's contact mid-corner. Prilwitz gathers it back up and goes defensive once again. I thought he had it like you, but uh, Prilwitz slammed the door shut. And as you say, or point at the screen, Amoroso's there now. Amoroso's catching up. He's reeling in the big fish. They are battling out, and it's allowing him to close in. You can see him looming large in the mirrors of Zamet. Zamet just can't find a way past here because Prilwitz is placing that truck exactly where he needs to, parking it on the apex and blocking off every opportunity that Zamet can possibly think about trying to get through. Smith is doing a splendid job at the head of the field. He's almost got a straight length over this battle for position two. Zamet's got the inside line here. He's got to run. We know he's got more power, but who's going to break later between Prilwitz and Zamet? <laughs> Prilwitz breaks later, keeps the outside line there. I'm Zamet, here, oh, and he's run here. off. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. Oh, he's, oh, he's left it. <laughs> so Zamet takes position two, and that allows Amoroso through as well. So they're going to come across and take P2. And P3, Prilwitz, unfortunately, unable to keep control of the truck in the late stage there. He'll be ruining. He'll be absolutely kicking himself for that mistake. That was unfortunate. But what a fantastic battle between Prilwitz and Zamet. They put on some spectacular racing there, Dan. Certainly did. And there was battling all the way through that race, wasn't there? Initially for the lead, he was holding them off. And then Smith finally got through with a great move. And then Zamet was handing him lap after lap. And you thought Prilwitz was going to hold on. He really broke late into the final sequence of corners and we'll see it on the replay. He was so much late, he was looking to the right, he's looking at Zamet, where's Zamet gonna break? There was the answer. He broke a few meters later, but the front tires couldn't live with it. The understeer, you can see the front wheels chattering. He kept the lock on and unfortunately, that spun the truck around when it re-entered the circuit. On the final lap as well, Butwell managed to sneak around the outside of uh, Robert Fern in the uh, number 23 machine as well to take fourth position uh, off camera. And that's because we were watching this scintillating battle between Zamet, Spruwitz and Amoroso late on. So uh, in the end, Smith taking the victory by nearly eight seconds from Stephen Zamet. Frank Amoroso coming across the line in position number three, the quiet achiever there in that race. Barry Butwell, good recovery from the back of the grid to finish in position number four, ahead of Robert Fern, who relinquished that spot on the final lap. Lachlan Fern in the lightweight truck came home in sixth, ahead of Mitchell Prilwitz, who was at the front throughout the entire race. But unfortunately, a mistake on the final lap means that he finished. Trucks are rolling in to the final couple of corners. We're about to go green. So uh, welcome back. Lunch break is over very quickly. And we're about to go back racing. It looks to me like it's a reverse grid of the previous race results. So the lightweight truck is going to start at the front. Then it's Pruitt, Fern, Butwell, Amoroso, Zamet and Smith. As we go green once again at the Nations Action Track, down in towards turn number one. They're pretty quiet, pretty tame so far, which is uh, surprising considering the last race 
that we saw Butwell up the inside of Amoroso. You can just about see, there they are. They re-emerge and up the inside goes Amoroso on Prilwitz. Nice move made there and Zamit's going to follow through. He's managed to get past Butwell and has done so. Oh, sorry, that was Smith, uh, not Zamit. Uh, nice move though there from the number 96. It's, uh, oh. oh, contact there. Lots of nose and tail contact with multiple trucks down there at turn number seven as we currently know it. And there is the 96 trying around the outside. We'll have the inside now on 23, but it's gonna be Smith, I think, with the high ground, the better line. Oh, oh. no, not when the 23 misses the apex, clouts into the side of the number 60. They've absolutely uh, really upped the aggression in the last couple of races. And the number 96 now is up the inside of 23. Here comes Prilwitz up the inside. Oh, the 23 runs ever so slightly wide, maintains the line coming through the final chicane. Prilwitz puts the foot down though. Butwell's going to join him to go past Robert Byrne in the 23, who's hung out to dry. Here comes Smith as well. He fancies a chance. So they're going to run three wide. No, two wide going into turn one. So Prilwitz just ahead of Butwell there. The number one orange truck doing a fantastic job. Lachlan Verner, the head of the field in the lightweight truck, the number 32, currently leading the way, doing a stellar job. And he has got Amoroso hunting him down. But here's Prewitz on screen. Butwell just behind, and is that Smith? Uh, yes, it is Smith in the number 60. Having a look up the inside, oh. they make contact. Oh, Butwell runs wide. He regains himself, but the truck's looking all sixes and sevens. There's a visible damage, cosmetic damage on the front of it as well. They are racing hard out there at the moment. Bruwitz is rubbing his hands with bleed. This one, Smith's now trying it around the outside. They make contact as they come under the old gum tree. He loses the inside line. No, he hangs inside there, runs wide, slams into the side of Butwell. And he now he receives a serve from behind from Zamet, who's vying into this battle. So Zamet trying to get past as well while the ensuing battle unfolds ahead of him. Smith stretches ahead of Butwell now. So he will stretch his legs as they come into the final chicane sequence of corners. Zamet looming large in the mirrors of Butwell right now. How crossed up was Butwell though, uh, over the uh, grass at six, and look at the exit from Zamet. He's got the run on Butwell and will easily take that place into turn number one. Uh, there looks like there's a little bit of a uh, look further back. Couldn't quite see who it was through all of the plumes of smoke down there at the first turn. Nice exit from the Smith-driven truck looking all over the tail of Prilwitz, who uh, defended throughout the, uh, the previous race so very well, and is gonna do it all again. This time for third position. Fortunately though for the 31, it all came unstuck on the final lap of the race. What can he do this time? Already showing the nose is the number 60, gonna go the long way. He made this work on Butwell last lap through. We'll have the inside. No, not quite able to keep any overlap. Don't rule out Zamet. Look, the six-time champ is right in there, right on the tail of both of these two as they exit turn number nine and head down towards the end sequence of corners. Prilwitz ultralate on the brakes again. Oh, there's more mid-corner contact, but great move around the outside. Four wheels over the oh. curb. Oh, more contact on the exit. Look for Zamit. Oh, yeah, Prilwitz knows that's coming. Puts the power down, tries to defend, but gets all kind of sideways. Zamit will look for the crisscross, the exit of the corner to swing up the inside of the next corner, oh, and he's done that. just that. Absolutely great pass. And Zamit moves through on the 31, who's been hung out to dry. And through goes Butwell Prilwitz fighting his Mack truck. And just about regains composure there. But it's all happening again in this reverse grid race. Here's a move for the lead that has just happened. Amoroso, great run. And with all the extra power of the big truck, easily breezes past the number 32. Oh! oh! Prilwitz into the side of Butwell. The Mack trucks coming together at turn number seven. Oh, Butwell's been in the wars in this one. He already had quite a few uh, marks. Has to pull reverse and get it spun back the right way. These guys are absolutely fighting for sheep stations today. Gosh, they've absolutely turned up the wick in the last couple of races. I don't know if they're hungry and ready for lunch or something, but uh, they're absolutely 
fighting so aggressively with each other. And uh, we see that Smith is catching up to the lightweight truck now, as this is a replay. Pruitt is miles back. That's five, six truck lengths back. He's pulled it up the inside and just hit the side of Butwell. I don't know if Butwell was going slowly into there or if Pruitt has misjudged the corner completely, but there was six or seven truck lengths, Callum. Ambitious is the word for that attempted move. Unfortunate for Butwell because he's been rotated and there appears the truck's looking a little bit second hand, unfortunately. There's a lot of cosmetic damage and he's taking it very easily out there at the moment. Here is Smith on screen right now. Lachlan Fern just ahead of him. Although it is a smaller truck, it's in the way. It's on the racing line. He can make it as wide as he wants to try and prevent the, car, uh, sorry, the truck of Shannon Smith from making his way past. Zamet buying into this battle as well. So coming down the old back straight, you can see the power disparity between Shannon Smith and Lachlan Fern. The 32 just tucks over to the left-hand side as Smith comes through. Smith sharing that truck this weekend with Harvey Dahl. That's number 60 passing through our screens now. And Zamet, we anticipate he's going to get a good run coming onto the straight here. And we know how much horsepower, uh, how much grunt that Kenworth has as he does indeed pull out. And he'll take the inside line coming into the first turn. This is the last lap of the race, Dan. As quickly as it started, it is just as quickly unfolding. It's unbelievable how fast these races uh, flash by you, given the amount of action on track that's happening at the moment. And there has been plenty in this one. Yeah, certainly has. And Zabit's going to go around the outside, even against a small truck. That's a risky move. He's right on the verge of the road, just about keeping it on the tarmac and makes the move stick. Great pass from Stephen Zamet in the iconic purple and green Kenworth. Very nicely done. And that is third position for him. And I think that might be it because we are on the final lap. It's a shame. I've thoroughly enjoyed the uh, trucks these last couple of races. They've turned up the wick and they have really put on a show. Can't we have a couple more? Can we, can we squeeze in a truck race after the Winton 300? Division truck in the uh, Winton 300 yeah, coming up later on. That'll be spectacular. <laughs> Here comes Amoroso though. Frank Amoroso, the number 96 racer coming onto the main straight. He's going to take the chequered flag. Very well deserved. Excellent effort there. He's steadily made his way through the field in the past few races. Here comes Smith across the line in P2 as well. Here's Pruitts. He's seen his fair share of action. He is uh, behind the truck of Robert Firm, the, Firm, the number 23, coming under the main straight here and finishing in fourth position and fifth position. Sorry, fifth and sixth position, I should say, respectively. And we've got Butwell, who's still circulating out there on the circuit, or is he peeled into the paddock? I, I believe he's in the has, paddock. Yeah, so yeah. unfortunate for him to not finish that race, but involved in that altercation at the top of the circuit, Dan. Wow. Super truck racing at Winter Motor Raceway. Spectacular. Catch your breath, everybody. That was spectacular. That was a thoroughly enjoyable race. And we have to say well done to Frank Amoroso. First race victory for him of the 2024 Super Truck Series. And that was thoroughly deserved. Uh, made his uh, intentions known early in that race. Moved quickly through the field and took the lead early on and never relinquished it. He took the win in the end by 3.6 seconds from Shannon Smith. Stephen Zamet came home in third position. Good points from him once again in the final race. Great performance from Lachlan Fern. Started from pole in the lightweight truck, but did very nicely to finish in fourth position ahead of Robert Fern. Mitchell Prilwitz was in the thick of the action all day long. And uh, unfortunately for him, coming off at second best on more than one occasion there, finishing as the last of the runners. And Barry Butwell, that was a, uh, unfortunately, uh, torn up uh, truck at the front of the Mac machine and a non-finisher in the end. So the reigning champion taking another hit in the point standings. It was not a good round for him in the championship. It was, though, for Stephen Zamet, who finished third. As you see, some burnouts, everybody, on the start line. Wow. He is chuffed with his first victory of the season. And some Shane Van Isbergen-style burnouts on pit straight. 
My goodness gracious me, have you ever seen anything like that, Callum? Trucks doing burnouts. Never seen anything like that. I'll be revving up the Hume Highway on my way home this <laughs> evening to see if we can get a repeat of that spectacular celebrate in a Shane Van Gisbergen-esque burnout. Just one number off though, 97 yes. versus 96 for Amoroso. What a way to celebrate and what a way to cap off the weekend. Spectacular action for the Australian super trucks and they certainly dialed up the action for those last two races and you can barely see through the tyre smoke uh, looking through uh, the haze there from the tyres. So we suspect the maybe a mechanical gremlin from that burnout, but it looks like he's still circulating out there, so it shouldn't cause too many issues. Uh, but he will certainly bust out the bottle of sparkling wine and spray it around in celebration with his team. So a fantastic effort there from Team Amoroso. Amoroso. I don't think it's looking too healthy, though. There's certainly uh, some smoke coming out of the side of it, but uh, I don't think he'll care too much. He's, he'll be absolutely delighted with that race victory. You can hear him trying to, uh, to rev it, and there is definite smoke coming from the side of that truck. But hey, he won his first race Here in 2024. Go. Here it is again on the Blendline TV uh, replay. Look at that. Absolutely turning it up, smoking it up the hill. Those tyres are absolutely destroyed and they're not cheap to replace, let's put it that way. You can hear it. <laughs> How did it go? Sorry. <laughs>